What the fuck, Marvel? No, seriously, what the fuck? <laughs> What's up, everyone? This is Carrie, aka Nerdy Girl Crates, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to take a look at some news that's been spreading across the internet, and we are going to start with the most popular story right now, and that has to do with Namor's possible appearance in Black Panther 2. No, it's not excitement. <laughs> Actually, it has to do with the possibility that his backstory is being changed. But of course, <laughs> because we can't just let things be. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But according to Disney, everything needs to be changed. So why does Namor not be included in that? And unfortunately, if this is true, it's going to suck because they have a great opportunity to uh, really go up against Aquaman, which has been doing really well. I mean, it remains to be seen with the next movie, do this whole trial thing. But they could have really proved how great Namor is of a character compared to what Arthur Curry has been in the comics. And I know, yes, Aquaman's Jason Moa is just very charismatic. But if you go back to the days of when they were just comic book characters, Namor was a l far more popular than Arthur. And there was a reason, because he was complicated. <laughs> now, in the comics, Namor is, just like Arthur, the um, Prince of Atlantis. The difference is um, his father was a ship captain and his mother was an Atlantean princess, but he is also a mutant. Now, the rumor of his backstory is going to be changed to from Atlantean to possibly South American, having to do with maybe the Mayan Aztec type origin. I really don't know where they're going to go with this. I mean, if you didn't want to do like Atlantis, you could have probably done something much more believable with like the Pacific. Because if I remember correctly, there was a storyline where Atlantis was then uh, positioned in the Pacific in Namor. And you could have done more of like a Polynesian, Asian theme. But instead, we're doing a South American Maya Aztec. I have no idea how they're going to work this story in. Um... I don't know if they're going to do something like the City of Gold was the city that sunk instead of Atlantis. Or... You know, I don't know. It's already sounding very far-fetched, in my opinion. I mean, they might pull pull it off. I'm not sure about this. I'm already just like, eh. And you wonder why I wrote the goodbye video for uh, the MCU. Now, Mexican actor Tanash Harada, I swear, this week has been a challenge with pronunciations. Um, he was in Narcs, Mexico, and The Forever Purge. Don't know. Never saw him. But allegedly, he has been cast as Namor. Now, wouldn't be my choice. I would have done somebody like Brian T., who's got the eyebrows to pull it off. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I Again, my expectations for the MCU are no longer here. They're somewhere down there. So, at this point, I don't even care anymore. But this is what's allegedly going around. Who cares, right? So, if it's true, we'll find out soon enough. In my opinion, I don't even know why we're doing a Black Panther 2 without Chadwick Boseman. God rest his soul. But they are. Now, speaking of news... um. Screen Rant had this really interesting article about Deku from My Hero Academia. Now, if you've watched my channel, you know I'm a big fan of My Hero Academia. And apparently, this um, article confirms that Deku could be their ultimate villain. Hold up. Don't panic. It's not what you think. Now, what they're insinuating is that if you are familiar with My Hero Academia, the character of Deku um, was somebody who was not born with powers, unlike most of society. And his dream was always to be a superhero, and he looked up to um, All Might and was hoping to become a hero, but was disappointed when he found out he didn't have powers. However, All Might gives him the ability to have powers. 
One of the things Deco was doing all these years was keeping notes about every superhero that um, he encountered, talking about their powers, talking about their weaknesses, just trying to learn everything he could. And that's where they're applying where he could become the ultimate villain, not by choice, but a la Tower of Babel by Mark Wade, where Batman's uh, records on every member of the Justice League got into the hand of Ray Shaul, and he ended up using it to take them down. And I mean, yes, it's true. I mean, he keeps them in notebooks, so it's not like it's hard to get a hold of. Um, every little secret of every one of these heroes, from the pro heroes to the students, could be revealed if it falls into the wrong hands. And that could be an interesting concept. However, I don't like to think of Deco being a villain because he's such a pure soul. <laughs> but then again, who knows? So it's kind of interesting that Screen Rant would try to imply this. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it's not like it wouldn't be an, an, not an interesting concept. Now, speaking of interesting concepts, if you've been following Boom Studios, they have been publishing the Power Rangers comic book. And for the next comic book, they have announced a new Power Ranger villain called Death Ranger. First off, that name is just what? You could that's the best you can come up with. But that's not his selling point. Well, excuse me. They them selling point. That's right, because this Power Ranger is non-binary. Because he of course he is. <laughs> so Death Ranger comes from a planet where they do not use gender pronouns. They all identify as they, them. Look, I don't care what people want to identify as, that's fine. But you're telling me about this character's pronouns, but you're not telling me much in this article about what the hell his threat is. Or, I'm sorry, they, them's threat is. Uh, and really, you're making the villain the one representing this? Is everybody okay with that? Because it's a little weird. Um, so yes, this entire alien race of they thems um, is setting up to be the next villain, Death Ranger, and he will be. I'm sorry, they them will be premiering soon in the next Boom Studios comic. Now this is written by Paul Aller, and they're very excited about having this non-binary villain. Again. Okay, what makes them dangerous? What's their motivation for challenging the Power Rangers? You're introducing a villain, you need to tell me why he's a, he, she, they, them, whatever is a villain. What do the Power Rangers have to fear from this person? I'm sorry, alien. And this is why. <laughs> oh, gosh. Boom. I expect better from you. You're one of the few uh, lines I still read comics from. But yeah, so they're going to be introducing soon. I don't know exactly what issue. But this new Death Ranger. I mean, come on. I, this is the best you could come up for a name and a concept. I mean, I don't care about the pronoun part, but that's all you're focusing on. Tell me why I should be afraid of this character. What is he going to do that's going to be like, I'm sorry, they, them, is going to do to be such a threat to the Power Rangers? And really, this is the kind of representation you want to give to the community. Hey, guys, guess what? We have a villain for you. I don't want, <laughs> I don't think they want a villain. I think they want a hero. So yeah, that's in today's news. Marvel once again screws it up with the next phase of the MCU. Deco might be going villain. At least it's a theory. Again, not by choice. And the Death Ranger, they them, is coming to the Power Rangers. <sighs> I'm going to go read some manga and watch some anime. 
So go ahead, tell me what you think down below in the comment section. Have you heard anything interesting? What are your thoughts on these stories? I would love to know your, your opinion. I really would. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.